holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing this uh, first hymn, hymn 471. Let us break bread together. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
that in the night of Jesus' betrayal, he gathered his closest disciples and fed them a meal of love. Gather us, Lord. Remember us from the waters of baptism and feed us, Lord. Your very presence that gives us life and hope, even in darkness. In the name of our God, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. from the first book of Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we prepare for our gospel. put your bulletins down as I'm reading from the Gospel of Luke rather than the the Mark text. The Gospel according to Luke. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. The Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. There's a movie that is based off the memoir by Antoine Fisher. The memoir is called Antoine Fisher, or the the movie is. And in it, it uh, follows his journey of his life uh, to adulthood where he reconnects with his family. His father had died before he was born. His mother, who was unable to take care of him, had to put him in the foster system. And he grew up in foster homes where he was abused, abused in dreadful ways. And by the time he was an adult, he had no connection to any family, biological or adoptive. And this came out in violent ways, outbursts that he didn't seem to be able to control. 
In the movie, he has a dream. And in this dream, he's a little boy, like 10 years old, and he's standing in a field, and he starts to walk towards this large structure, this barn that he sees. And when he gets to the door, it opens, and there inside are just dozens and dozens of people from every generation, from every time and place. You can see from their clothing that they go back in history. And you understand without there being any words that this is his family. And they take him by the hand and they bring him further into the room. And inside is this long table filled with food. He's set down at the head or two women, they look like they're the matriarchs of the family. They, they take a plate of a stack of pancakes that look delicious. And they slowly bring this plate of pancakes down in front of him, this little 10-year-old boy. But it's a dream. And he wakes up. He's sweating. And you can see he's grieving for what he has lost. It struck me that this dream is kind of like a memory. Now, I know memories are supposed to be of things that have happened, and, and this is of something that hasn't happened, but it still has that feel of a memory. A memory of something Antoine has lost. It's a memory of who he is. He is someone's son, someone's grandson, someone's nephew, someone's great, 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 great grandson. It's a memory that holds longing and aching, a desire not to be cut off. It's a memory of belonging. Belonging. It may seem strange to talk about memories as with something that didn't happen, right? But as I thought about it, you know, I got memories that I don't actually remember, y'all. I'm sure you do too. Stories that have been told in your family over and over and over again until you can tell them like they're yours, amen? They become your story. Memories that you can see and feel in your mind images you have. I got those kind of memories whether or not I was there to actually experience them. Do this in remembrance of me, Jesus says. It's a story we tell. We tell it every Sunday here at Messiah. When we're breaking bread and sharing the cup, we are telling the story again. And we tell it every year in longer form through Holy Week. Because this too is a memory of something we weren't there to physically see happen. Jesus at his last meal with his disciples, and yet we still tell it. And tell it, and tell it, and tell it until the image is fixed in our mind and the memory is ours. A table, a poor, grimy teacher who has just made a long journey, his friends around him, and a meal, the Passover meal. That meal is also a meal of memory. Remembering when God rescues the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. It's a memory of God's faithfulness, a memory that God liberates, a memory that God restores. It, it made me realize, you know, when Jesus says to his disciples, I have longed to share this meal with you, it's a good reason. It's a memory. You know, knowing what he is to face, knowing what he's about to go through and walk through and struggle with, he wants to remember. 
Remember God's faithfulness in the past. Share this meal that means so much. And in that meal, Jesus then points his disciples, points us to a future of God's faithfulness. A new covenant, a new promise of liberation and restoration. You will not be cut off. You will not be lost forever. You will be restored. I am giving my very self to you. So got that image in your mind, that memory, that story of Jesus at the table, surrounded by his friends. Look around that table, y'all. As Jesus says, this is my body given for you. Who's at that table? It's his disciples who fall asleep when Jesus just really wants somebody to stay up with him and pray because he is struggling and he is tired and he is afraid. At that table is his betrayer, the one who will give him over to the police. At that table is his friend who when the things get tough, tells everybody that he doesn't even know Jesus. I am not with that guy. See them at the table. This is who's there. And all of them, all of them are told, this is my body given for you. This is for you, Peter. This is for you, Judas. This is for us. This is for us. This is for us who are also cut off, who also need liberation, who also need restoration. Like Antoine, this meal is for anyone who is separated from God and from community because of the actions of others. Because of exclusion, told this table ain't for you. Because of abuse and harm and hurt. Because of injustice. And this is for anyone who is separated from God and from others because of their own actions because of a refusal to see and recognize the things that make for peace, like we heard on Sunday. Because we're trapped by our own anxieties and caught in self-righteousness and are afraid of death and dying and are separated by death and dying. In other words, this meal is for everyone. Amen? Amen? This meal is for everybody because it is us, because we are all those things. Sitting at the table is the excluded one, the betrayer, the denier. And Jesus says, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Towards the end of this movie, Antoine discovers, finds his family on his dad's side, the father he never knew, the father who died before he was born. And they invite him to the house where he walks up to the front porch, sees the, the door of this normal looking house, and the door opens and in its frame you can see dozens of people filling up the space. You see his aunt, whom he had already connected with, smiling a huge smile and grabbing him by the hand and taking him in. 
And as she draws him further and further and further into the crowd of people, there are people hugging him, grabbing him, hanging on to him, patting him on the shoulders and on the back saying, I'm your father's sister, I'm your daddy's cousin. All these people he doesn't know and yet he remembers, amen? Remembers. And then they come to a double doors that open up and there is a table spread with food, including a plate of pancakes. <laughs> People of many generations. And at the head of this table is a woman who looks like she is at least his great grandmother. And she motions silently to him. And he walks forward and he bends down and she takes his face in her hands and she simply says, welcome. And then she turns to everybody and says, come on, let's eat. This memory of belonging he has, this dream, becomes something tangible something he can see and taste and feel and know. Do this in remembrance of me, says Jesus. Because it's not just a memory, not just a story we tell, but a story, a memory, a knowledge that gets flesh on it. In breaking bread together in the name of Christ, the memory, the dream becomes tangible. Something we can see and taste and feel and know. We receive it with hands outstretched, and then we join in what Jesus is already doing. We feast with tax collectors and sinners. We pass the bread and the wine to those who may betray us. We return and restore those who have been cut off and excluded maybe by us. We return them, we return us to the family of God. A family that stretches over time. We become part of this kingdom work that God is bringing to fulfillment. The meal is for us, because the meal is for everybody. And like An Antoine entering the house with his family for the first time, when the feast is shared, the dream becomes reality. All are welcome. All belong. We are not cut off. This is my body given for you, Jesus says. This is my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen.
going to join together in this hymn, Eat This Bread, that is printed in your bulletin. And we'll sing it through twice, um, at which point I'll go into the prayers. We'll return to it once more, um, go into another prayer, and sing it one final time. The choir will help lead us. Let us sing. God, we give you thanks that you have gathered us here in this place, gathered us all to the table, and that there is more than enough. The table is long and wide, and everyone has a seat. God, we pray for those places in our world where it is barely a memory that they belong to you. Places that are experiencing violence and war, abuse. We lift up those who are mourning the loss of sacred sites, Notre Dame, mosque in Jerusalem, and churches in the U.S. God, we lift up those who are grieving. May you gather your people. We pray for all those who are struggling with illness, who are facing depression, who feel trapped by addiction. We lift up the many people in our own community here at Messiah. May we surround them and comfort them, and may our remembrance take flesh. May the kingdom of God come. We lift up the cries of our hearts and the burdens of our world as we sing. Son commanded us. We remember the love that was poured out to us and shown to us in his final meal on the night in which he was betrayed. As Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, strengthen us in this meal. Bind us together in your love as we sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. All are welcome to the table God has set. Thanks be to God. You may be seated as we have our assistants come forward, and then all may come and join in this meal. visiting today, please know that you're welcome at this table. Every child of God is welcome to come and eat.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this, your body and blood, work in us the fruits of your redemption so that we will show forth those fruits in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as we join together singing this hymn 351, O Sacred Head Now Wounded.
festival of the unleavened bread which is called the Passover was near and the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death for they were afraid of the people my God my God why have you forsaken me why so far from saving me so far from the words of my groaning My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet ye are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. trusted and you rescued them my god my god why have you forsaken me then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot who was one of the twelve and he went away and he conferred with the chief priests and the officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. And they were greatly pleased and they agreed to give him money. So he consented and he began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh, me to scorn. They curl their lips they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him, if God so delights in him. My, My God. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I pray for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers then. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you even know me. Yet you're the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. 
be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of fashion surround me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the mountain of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he reached that place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. And then he withdrew, withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and he prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. They opened wide their jaws at me, like a slashing and roaring lion. poured out like water all my bones are out of joint my heart within my breast is melting wax my strength is dried up like a potsherd my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth and you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in, a band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. My God. While Jesus was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading that crowd, and he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you will betray the Son of Man? I can count all my bones while they stare at me and glow. divide my garments among them for my clothing they cast lots but you O Lord be not far away O oh, my help hasten to my aid deliver Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of wild bulls, you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then they seized him and they led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. You who fear the Lord give praise. All you of Jacob's line give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, 
all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May our hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. My Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that just struck you? And they kept heaping other insults upon him. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust Though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn. Saying to them, the Lord has acted. 